Jets searching for their first win. Welcome in the tough 2-2 two and two Arizona Cardinals to MetLife Stadium. And does Joe Flacco actually give them a better chance to win? And if so, why? Stable Radio, Jets welcome in the Cardinals uh, for Week 5, 0-4. Cardinals are 2-2. Two and two. They're a tough team. Kyler Murray... Joe Flacco will be starting. Sam Darnold out. Le'Veon Bell is back. Uh, they made some moves today. And can they make it a competitive game? That is the question. The other issue is the quarterback situation. Does Flacco actually give the Jets a better chance? And if so, why? Is it because he's better than Darnold? Or is it because of Gase's offense? First, we start with the transactions Saturday. Uh, Jets elevate Mike White and Lamar Jackson from the practice squad, which means Mike White will be the backup to Flacco. Darnold's out. Beckton's out. Perryman, the man who cannot fill Robbie Anderson's shoes because he cannot play, and that's been his issue since the Baltimore Ravens drafted him and Joe Douglas was a part of that organization. Those three guys are out. Flacco will start, like I said. Bell will be back. White will back up. Jackson, this was his second time being elevated from the practice squad, which means if they just want to use him again, they'll have to sign him to the active roster. The Alec Ogletree era is officially over. And I know that saddens Jets fans everywhere, worldwide, countrywide, New Jersey, Long Island. I know the joy... They got out of watching the Wiley vet run a 6-4-40 sideline to sideline, end zone to end zone, but he is officially gone. You'll just have to go on with your life without Alec Ogletree, the veteran on defense. With Alec Ogletree, Josh Malone also released. Josh Malone was another one of these high high to mid draft picks, I think, of the Cincinnati Bengals. I think he was a third rounder, if I'm not mistaken, who has disappointed. And he's been serving as the Jets kick returner, which signals that Ashton Davis is back and healthy. Ashton Davis is officially listed as questionable. The other guys who will join the fray are Jimmy Murray, offensive lineman, to help fill the shoes of missing Becton because McDermott will slide McDermott or Adoga will slide to tackle. They just need that extra body. And that should do it. Uh, Murray was signed to the active roster and that's it for the transaction Saturday. Malone Ogletree cut, you know, about the Flacco situation, the white situation, the Darnold situation, the guys that are questionable, are Bless Austin, Ashton Davis, we just touched on him, John Franklin Myers, and Chris Hogan, and Jordan Jenkins. I believe all of these guys will play. We shall see, though. Um, None of them should be healthy scratches. If they're healthy enough to, to play, they will dress. Also on the injury report, but listed as full participant Friday, Jamison Crowder, Chuma Adoga, Frank Gore, Jordan Willis. So it should be interesting if they play Adoga or McDermott to start in Becton's spot. I would suspect McDermott. Media was not at practice Friday, obviously, because of the COVID scare. So how they, you know, and everyone was sent home. So what their plans are remains to be seen. Obviously, it turned out to be a false positive after mass confusion. And it was probably the the first bit of great news the Jets received all year. Uh, you know, all year they've been, the, the PR and organization has been handling the COVID situation really tremendously. Joe Flacco starts, that's the big topic. Darnold remains the biggest topic, but he'll sit this one out with the shoulder. And Becton too. Listen, Becton... He is the most valuable offensive player on this team by far. When he's not in there, the offensive line is much different. 
the running game's much different. He moves, guys. Uh, you know, the, the pocket's much different when he's not in there. So Flacco behind a non becton offensive line could be a disaster. But when you think about Adam Gase's offense, and you think about Flacco and the way he plays, and you think about Darnold and the way he plays, as crazy as it sounds, and as much as you don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. Joe Flacco may give the Jets a better shot to win, thanks to Adam Gase. That's not a positive. That's a negative. Obviously, a lot of fans want to tank. Other fans don't hold that view. They want to see a win, no matter what. But the negative comes in why Joe Flacco may give the Jets a better shot to win. And it's because of Adam Gase's offense being outdated. If you think about his offense, it's a decade, 12, 15-year-old offense. He, a big part of his career was learning under Mike Martz. So a lot of those principles, along, along with Peyton Manning in Denver, at first a wide receivers coach and quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator, so a lot of those principles infuse together. And what you have is an offense that, amazingly enough, does try to cater to the quarterback, but asks the quarterback to be dynamite. He won't cater to a, a slow developing or slow witted quarterback. He wants and asks his quarterback to be great. And that's, you just can't play it that way. So he wants his quarterback to do stuff pre-snap. He doesn't run a lot of college principle stuff that we've seen over the last decade. And it really started with the Wildcat in 2008. You know, the season Favre was here in Jersey, got the key to the city, all that good stuff. Mikey T, Mangini. And another alternate universe, side note, Mangini and Mikey T are still the duo running the Jets, and they're two Super Bowls in right now. But it didn't work out. Mangini made mistakes. But Mikey T and Mangini together might have been the best personnel duo in Jets history in terms of head coach, GM. They built that back-to-back AFC championship team. But 2008, Tom Brady gets hurt. Opening week, Matt Castle comes in. Patriots are 2-0. They've won, I don't know how many games straight. I think 21 it was. 21 regular season games. Dolphins were 0-2 with Chad Pennington. And they won the division that year and started 0-2. And then suddenly, boom. Week three, the Wildcat gets introduced to the NFL. David Lee on the Dolphins offensive coaching staff introduces it. To the Dolphins and Dan Henning, who was the offensive coordinator and the head coach is Tony Sperano. He gets his first victory. Ronnie Brown goes off for five touchdowns, over 100 yards on the ground, four rushing touchdowns, a passing touchdown. Ricky Williams almost hits 100 yards. And Belichick, for you know one of the rare times in his life, had no answers. It introduced the advantage in the NFL thanks to new rules, where the offense, the passing game, had an advantage. So defenses started catering to the pass, uh, you know, catering to pass defense. Boom, suddenly the Wildcat comes and the offense is using one extra blocker. Quarterback's out wide, you have to put someone out there, you just have to, even if you halfway it, you split it halfway. And it eliminated an extra player that wasn't being used, number one. And number two, it introduced edge-threatening principles with the Wildcat you put the running back in the backfield. You have another weapon, running back or receiver, running jet motion. Jet motion, it had been used previously in the NFL, just like the read option, but very sparingly. Prior to then, everyone was afraid of running a read option or jet motion out of fear that the defensive edge, the defensive end, or outside linebacker, if it's a 3-4, would cripple the guy trying to turn that corner. You know, it had to be a running back who was big enough, who was punishing enough to take that punishment. If it's a quarterback, if it's a little receiver and you do it too often, 
they will wind up injured. They will wind up on the shelf. But once the Wildcat came in 2008, everyone started to realize, hey, this is not the same league anymore. It's a bit softer. The rules have changed, and it caters to the offense. Fast forward three, four years. Three years. Tim Tebow, 2011, with Denver. And Gase was there. I think he was a quarterback's coach at this time. By this year, he was receiver's coach two years prior. He was not the offensive coordinator. But Tebow, Denver, once Tebow got inserted, they started running a zone read scheme, a power quarterback designed rushing scheme, and it worked. They got to the playoffs. The ceiling was obviously capped because Tebow, you know, serious limitations throwing the ball. It worked. They got to the playoffs. Uh, Tebow throws that overtime touchdown to beat the Steelers in the wild card round. And then they get smashed the week later. 2012. This is when Robert Griffin and Colin Kaepernick goes off. Again, read option. Greg Roman is in San Francisco. Zone read under Harbaugh. Great seasons. Griffin tears it up. Obviously gets injured. That's the worry. Kaepernick tears it up. They get to a Super Bowl, nearly win a Super Bowl if the refs call interference on the Crabtree fade. Eventually, defenses started to catch up a little bit. And then although offense is still, you know, ran zone read and read option and, you know, got their quarterback involved in design schemes at times, defenses started to catch up. That's how it goes. Fast forward now, 2020. Last year, 2019, I don't know if defenses will ever catch up again. Because along with the offensive rules, the league has become so soft that these quarterbacks and these weapons, Tyree Kill running off the edge on the jet sweep, any kind of, any kind of play off jet motion, they don't get hurt frequently. You know, you don't have a Lawrence Taylor ripping the guy's head off on the edge. Because of the concussions, concussion issues, and the health issues in the NFL trying to be pristine in that area, the league has become softer. And offensive play designers have realized, hey, we could do this college stuff. We could do this edge-threatening stuff and run our quarterback, like Lamar Jackson, who, by the way, Greg Roman did it with Kaepernick, and now he's doing it with Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. He is the zone read king in the NFL. Josh Allen in Buffalo. I mean, it, it, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen didn't have the zone read. If they didn't have uh, that, that part where they're in the, in the run game designed, not the scramble stuff, but the designed run plays, the options, the read options, uh, the speed options, the quarterback powers, if they didn't have that, they would not be this successful because they have serious limitations as a pocket passer. But 2020... Defenses might not be able to ever catch up, and this might be the game moving forward. A lot of coaches adapted. McVay, Roman, Brian Dayball. Uh, who am I missing? Rams, Bills, Ravens. Uh, Dak Prescott does it a lot. Kingsbury with Kyler Murray. You'll see it Sunday. Uh, it's not as intense or heavy as Baltimore or Buffalo, but they'll dabble. Gase has not caught up. Darnold could run some of this stuff. You don't want to do it often because Darnold, as big as he is, he's not as big as Josh Allen, and he's no Lamar Jackson with his legs. But Gase is living in a different decade still. And I understand you don't want to do that stuff with Darnold too frequently. But you also want to scheme open targets for the kid. His confidence is at an all-time low. And not running jet motion, not running enough outside zones, not doing things, orbit motion, not doing those things that scheme open guys, just just kill a kid's confidence. For instance, per ESPN, uh, after four weeks, ESPN's video tracking team, the Jets are dead last in motion at the snap. Not motion, set, snap. No, that doesn't count. Motion at the snap meaning a jet sweep, snapping it right when he's 
nearing the quarterback. Um, you know, running back, running a Ripper Liz in the backfield, parallel to the to the line of scrimmage, like you see Kansas City and Andy Reid do a lot. Andy Reid, another guy who not only adapted, but the league kind of conformed to the way he called plays. It was a perfect storm for him and and uh, Patrick Mahomes. But the Jets dead last two percent of the time. Do they run motion at the snap? There you have it. Falcons, 0-4, another 0-4 team. They are 31st. What is that, 3%? 3.6%. Bucks, 30th, they're 3-1 at 4%. And that's a Tom Brady team. That's, that's a pocket passing team. So, of course, Bruce Arians isn't going to run those concepts as much. He has to conform to Brady and what Brady likes to do. Dolphins 29th, Giants 28th, Detroit 27th. Leading the pack, the Ravens at the top at 37.5%. Rams, McVay, 29%. Bills are third at 22%. Washington is fourth, which is a little interesting with Haskins, but it makes sense with Haskins to a degree. 21.2%. Packers fifth, 19.6%, and that's with Aaron Rodgers, an old-school quarterback. Sixth is the Steelers. And that's with Ben Roethlisberger. Eighth are the Saints. Ninth are the Chiefs. Tenth are the Niners. Eleventh are the Patriots. And that makes, I'd figure the Patriots to be a little higher with Cam Newton. But that's another team, Belichick. Without Brady, he goes, give me Newton. We're going to, we're going to play the copycat game and do what they're doing up in Buffalo and in Baltimore with Cam Newton. You know, inverted veer, power inverted veer. I've saw, I've seen them run quarterback power to death. And if Cam Newton gets hurt, We'll shift the offense to Hoyer or uh, the other kid, Stidham. Gase hasn't evolved. That's why Flacco might give the Jets a better chance. Flacco is that traditional, he's 35 years old, he's that traditional quarterback, that pocket-passing quarterback. Darnold is the guy who needs these concepts, who's younger, who's used to these concepts, who can run uh, you know, a read option and transform it to Steve Young on a play for 46 yards. So for that reason, and it's a negative in every way, Joe Flacco might actually give the Jets a better chance to win than Sam Darnold on Sunday. Here's a play here for the people on YouTube. We'll give you a good idea of what you're, what I'm talking about with the Jet sweep. Uh, week one, Kansas City against Houston. There's the Jet sweep with Hill, fourth and one. They give it to Sherman on the fullback dive. Now, I, I think the Chiefs' offensive line is highly overrated. But because of these concepts, these edge-threatening concepts, watch number 41 and watch the edge. Watch where they end up because of the jet sweep. Gone. Fooled. If 41 is not fooled, he shuts this down, right down the egg gap. And still, Sherman struggles to get the first down, even while fooling that linebacker. That's what I'm talking about. And that's the stuff the Jets aren't doing. Here's another example with Roman in Baltimore. Another jet motion into a speed option. There goes Lamar Jackson. No chance. He pitches it. Dangerous. Who is that? Ingram? I'm not sure they're running back. I think it is Ingram. Um, there's the jet motion. Now watch the Cleveland defense. Watch the middle linebacker and watch that edge who has to be responsible. I mean, it's just not this, just those two guys. The whole defense flows to one side with the line, acting as if it's a, a mid to outside zone or jet sweep that way. Lamar, with his speed, forget about it. That is scheming up. I mean, is that Lamar's talent or is that scheme? That's scheme. And that's a lot. That's what you see with the Baltimore Ravens and the Buffalo Bills and the Los Angeles Rams. Jared Goff is not prime time, folks. But McVay schemes it. So for that reason, Flacco, hey, we'll see. Maybe he comes out and he's just terrible. You know, he hasn't played well in a long time. He hasn't played in a long time. He hasn't really been good since 2012, since that Super Bowl year. I think he had a good year, 2013, 2014. He had a good personal year, but after that, it's been all downhill. So maybe I'm dead wrong and Darnold is just head and shoulders above him. 
But in terms of Gase's scheme, Flacco gives them a better chance to win. Again, the picks for the week, I just can't get on my game here. We missed week one and two. Uh, We did week three. I missed last week, week four. Week two going back, I picked the Jets with the points, I believe, against the Niners. And that's a that's a big fat L. I picked the Patriots uh, against Oakland. And they blew them out. I won that one. But I lost the other two, which were the Cardinals and the Chargers, who were giving points and they both lost. So I'm 0-1 with the Jets, 1-2 and in the NFL. And we'll give it another shot this week. The Jets... They're getting seven and a half. You'd have to have your head examined to pick the Jets right now. Even if what I said is just true, that Flacco gives them a better chance, you don't pick them until they prove they could actually play competent football. And what we saw last Thursday night doesn't count. It just doesn't. That was a terrible Broncos team. Terribly coached as well. Vic Fangio. You know, the Broncos and the Jets really mirrored each other last year. Got off to terrible starts, kind of finished a little strong, and again, they did the same thing this year. It's coaching. So last Thursday night doesn't count. I'd gladly be wrong here, but I I, nobody could pick the Jets until they prove they could actually play competent football. So I'll take the Cardinals minus seven and a half. Uh, The first other NFL game, I'll take the Rams giving up seven and a half against Washington on the road. Rams, they've been a little spotty this year, but I think Washington's the, you know, not thinking about the Jets. I think they're the worst team in football. Jets are probably the worst. Washington's probably second worst. So we'll go Rams, road dog, excuse me, road favorite, minus seven and a half. I thought about Ravens, Bengals, but, you know what? Let's go with Bengals. Bengals getting 12 on the road against the Ravens. The Bengals have been scrappy this year. Joe Burrow has been good. And the Ravens, I think the Ravens are a bit overrated. You know, Lamar Jackson, I, I don't think it could keep up the pace he did last year and in the first two, three weeks until the Kansas City game. You know, if, and if he does, hat tip to him and Roman because they keep coming up with new stuff. But it's an NFC North game. It should be tight. I expect the Ravens to win. But give me the Bengals plus 12. The second game, the second game is the Giants plus eight and a half on the road against the Cowboys. Cowboys can't play a non-competitive game. Every game they play comes down to the wire. So unless they come out and blow out the Giants, I just don't I don't see that happening. I like the Giants. I think they're a lot better than their record indicates at 0-4. I think Joe Judge is a good coach. Obviously, they're not a good team right now, but I still think they're better than what their record shows. And I wouldn't even be surprised if the Giants knock off the Cowboys in this game. So give me the Giants plus 8.5. And, and the final game... Which one was it? Final game. I don't know where to go with this one, but I'll go with the Chiefs. We'll take a home favorite. Minus 11 and a half. I just don't think the Vegas Raiders are that good. I don't think Carr is that good. I don't think Gruden has... He's like Gase. I I don't think he's conformed to the new ways of the NFL either. And to to just uh, mix it up a little... Um, instead of taking a dog, I'll take the, I'll take a home favorite. So give me the Jets or give me the Cardinals, excuse me, minus seven and a half. Give me the Chiefs at home, minus 11 and a half. Give me the Bengals on the road, plus 12. And give me the Giants on the road, plus eight and a half. As far as the Jets are concerned, who the hell knows? Uh, It will be Flacco, MetLife, 1 o'clock, Fox, 
and we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I know Jets fans are depressed. The last thing they want to do is watch this game without Darnold, without Becton, without Mims, without the young guys to, to see what happens moving forward in the future. But hey, this is what you got right now. Watch everyone else. See, is Le'Veon Bell's coming back. See what he could do. It would be a lot nicer if Becton was in there. And Flacco, and it's kind of funny. If they win and Flacco tears it up in Gase's offense, that, that's a worse nightmare. It, it really is a worse nightmare in terms of looking at the bigger picture. The only way it's not is if it helps a lot of young guys this season build and grow. That's what you have to think about. If they win and Flacco does well, it has to benefit young guys this season, like Becton when he gets back in there, like a Mims when he finally gets in there, hopefully. That's what you're looking for. Maybe a Herndon. But, uh, yep, 1 o'clock. We'll see if the Jets can get their first win. Uh, Sabo Radio, check us out on YouTube iTunes, rate and review us on iTunes, on Apple. Uh, that's the one platform we got to push. Spotify, everywhere podcasts are. Until next time. 